Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another segment of our very first DLC run. And this time is going to be a little bit different than last time because some time has actually passed. We're now at cycle 52. I am at six duplicates. And yeah, let's talk about what has changed. Kind of just go back to more of that format of talking about things that are different. Um, I did a lot of the boring work of walling off the base, so we now have a nice temperature controlled wall. Uh, to hopefully help the temperature kind of get up a little bit higher in here, which is going to start bleeding in from this biome and a little bit from the bottom. Because um, I do need to pay close attention to make sure I'm not making it too cold for my food to grow. And we're getting kind of close, so it's at 62 and the lowest I can go is 50. And even stuff up here can't grow right now, so trying to be a little bit careful. So, But yeah, we've got all that stuff walled off. All the boring stuff that you definitely would not want to sit and watch during a video because that takes forever and it's not very exciting. Totally clicking the wrong thing. Uh, but yeah, some other stuff that's changed is I found a couple of other interesting things that we've never seen before. Let's take a look at these. Um, these are teleporter transmitters, which I think, I think, are going to be allowing us to uh, sending to send uh, dupes to other planets or like other asteroids. I'm pretty sure that's what this does. So. We need to select a passenger, and I think once the passenger is selected, they will go in there and they will be transmitted somewhere. And I... It's not showing it this time, because I had to click on it and see what it actually was, but it showed me this the other time when that happened. And I think that's a transmitter to send them to this other asteroid over here, which we can just take a look at. It looks like all we can see is the surface. So, I don't know if the duplicate that gets sent there gets sent to the middle or just to the surface but that would be a pretty interesting journey uh if they didn't have any way to breathe out there but yeah you can see the surface here it looks like just a bunch of sand like salt watery biomes it's a little bit of cold rust and salt right here but yeah this is very interesting never seen this before for sure so that's going to be kind of cool and over here you also see that you can change clusters so i can change back to my home and then I can change to the other one that I've never seen before, kind of just on a whim now. So that's definitely what the uh, machine has got to be for. So we're going to we're gonna check that out as soon as we can get access to it. We've got to solve some other stuff first as far as making ourselves sustainable. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at the other uh, things that I've found. Here's another warp pipe. This is a supply teleporter rather than I think the duplicate one. So this one... Oh no, this is also supply. Well, that's why it has the conveyor chute here. Okay. So then I guess that means that you could move stuff from one point to the other for free? I don't know what these take, but we will eventually get there and start playing around with them. Um, I just need to get a little bit more sustainable for right now as far as like power and oxygen and food that kind of and that kind of stuff before we start playing with any of the fancy stuff. I also did capture this cool slush geyser up here. This was mostly just to prevent it from erupting. Because um, I, I have plenty of water to work with, and if I let this erupt, it would come down here and it would start breaking through these uh, tiles, so I don't want to do that. I've also started to dig up a little bit more in an attempt to try to get to the surface, and I started hitting this, which, this temperature is ridiculous. Minus 82 degrees Fahrenheit. In Celsius, I would imagine that's probably around negative 65 or so. It's ridiculously cold. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something that I don't even know if I'm going to dig through, because... Uh, that's going to make everything really, really cold. Even if I were to expose it to this over here, which is this typical, like, caustic biome, this is only at 110, so the average is two things out, and it's still colder than I would like things to be. So I don't know how much further I'm going to be able to go up, at least very conveniently, but I don't know. Maybe we'll play around with it. We could always just wall it off with this tile here, too, to prevent any uh, major heat transfer from happening, so... Yeah, we're going to try that. Also, I found this guy. Um, this is called a Grub Grub, which I've never seen before. This is an egg that could potentially be laid by one of these Sweetles. Um, so that they have a small chance of landing those, but once you do get one of these out, these things have like a relationship with these plants. And I'm glad that we caught this at 97%, because when this thing grows fully, you'll see what a huge difference it is between the typical one. So this plant type is the same as this. Uh, let's find one that's actually grown. These. Uh, we looked a little bit at these. They look a little funny. Um, they look like the... Like a mesh sphere filled with, like, I don't know, ping pong balls or something like that. They look totally different if they're being cared for by one of these uh, grub grubs. 
So once this grows up fully, we'll have to keep our eye on it. It should be here any second, so we'll just watch it. But it looks dramatically different. There you go. That's what it looks like when these things actually have a relationship with one of these grub grubs. Um, so very, very interesting uh, stuff that's happening here. And I think when you harvest this, it harvests a lot more than normal. So these are just seeds. Let's see how much of this actually drops. We'll also know that how much has actually dropped here recently because we just had it fall off. So 800 kilocalories of spindly grub fruit and the big ones has got to be more, I would imagine. 2,000. So a little bit more than double. So pretty cool relationship between those two things. And I guess if you were going to ranch them, you just need to keep them in the same place. But I don't have a renewable version of sulfur, so I don't know how hard I'm going to go with that. We'll have to kind of keep our eye on that and consider doing something like that. What did they just drop? Oh, this has sweetel tending on it as well, which just gives it a growth boost. I've never even noticed that before. But that's pretty cool. Huh. Okay, then. All right. Let's see what else we got. Um, we got a new duplicate, like I talked about before. Um, I was trying to prioritize a duplicate that was going to be a supplier, but since this one was a janitor and they were available now, I just went ahead and took them. Uh, so, yeah, we're pretty much caught up on where we were before. Let's get started on what we want to do now. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit. We're starting to get idle warnings, so good timing for this. Uh, let's start getting our sinks and stuff up, which we are starting to be a little bit more religious about than I have in the past, only because it seems like the penalties are harsher for uh, letting germs get spread around your colony. I'm doing this wrong. I always forget which side is which when I do this. I usually will set half of this for a bathroom and the other half also for a bathroom, but one of them has like this extra space. So yeah. Go ahead and get this set up. This is also going to mean that we need to have some water. Wait. What am I doing? It just mess up again. I was right the first time. I don't know why it looks so wrong. But, uh, yeah. Getting some bathrooms and sinks up. This is going to necessitate us actually cleaning water before we send it into this system. And then I think the water that comes out, which will eventually just be a consistent stream of polluted water that has a ton of germs, I'm going to prioritize it to be sent into these farm tiles. Because uh, these are using up polluted water, so... Seems like a pretty healthy relationship between the two sides, so I might as well just start setting some of that stuff up. Um, let's start just setting that up, I guess, down here. Which we could do something like this, and then uh, the water that is runoff, which you could have your own self-sustaining loop. I've done that in the past, but um, that doesn't really matter that much from the standpoint of, like, the germs that are coming out are eventually just going to be consistent and the amount of polluted water that's going to be consistent, it's going to be 100% of what's passed into the system anyway. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not going to set up anything like that. Uh, I don't actually have pipes that are insulated yet, so that's kind of an interesting thing that we need to get on. Yeah, let's start grabbing some of this granite. Send it in there. Back out. This is going to be a line of clean water. Which we'll just send into here like this. And then the dirty water, I always kind of snake my pipes like this. Just so that I can handle any sort of overflow that might happen if everybody is using these all at once rather than backing up the actual system. And then, uh, this is something I've not talked about yet in any sort of tutorials or anything like that. Uh, but I want to have this come in here in a way that's going to prioritize what's coming from this pipe as opposed to the other side. So what I want to do is I want to construct this like so. I'm going to send something in from a bridge here, and on the outputs of the bridge, the priority that's going to be flowing through to the next pipe is going to be the stuff that's not coming through a bridge. So anything that's coming as far as like runoff from this area is going to be exclusively, uh, or rather the runoff from here is going to be sent in before anything from the bottom is set in so that we prioritize sending in the germy water, which the plants will just take care of. So there we go. We got our bathroom on the way. Sounds pretty good. The other thing I'm going to try to do is I'm going to start ranching uh, these guys, these plug slugs. And the ranching for this is going to be a little bit uh, convoluted, so we need to research a couple of things first. Um, the one byproduct that's going to happen from this is these things are going to be producing hydrogen, which I've seen happen every once in a while. So we need to research the generators if we don't have it already. And I do not 
see it anywhere because it's probably mixed in with something else. And I usually don't realize where it is because it's usually a byproduct of something else getting researched. So let me just look a little bit dumber unless it's actually researched by default already. I don't think so. No. All right. Here we go. It's right here. It just is a byproduct of this heavy watt wire, which is usually what I'm trying to research. I'm never specifically trying to research the hydrogen generator, so that makes sense. I also do have smart batteries, so we can start getting our whole power setup going. But yeah, we'll get onto more fancy power here, and we'll start to learn exactly how these plug slugs work. So what I want to do is I want to set up something for ranching. So let's set up a big room for these plug slugs. And then I also want to set up wire that these plug slugs can plug into, and as far as I understand, uh, they plug in, like, a wire that's, like, two spaces down. So I think if I run heavy watt wire, that will just take care of it. And then up above, I'm going to have a place where all the hydrogen's going to collect. And once it's up to a certain pressure, um, I'm going to just pump it into my power system. And we're going to generate both hydrogen power and uh, power from the plug slugs themselves. And, yeah, call that good. Let's go ahead and get the rest of this, whoops, set up. Um, hmm. Do I want this in the middle? I guess I don't really care where it's from, but I do want to isolate it to one side or the other, because the other side's probably going to be where I'm storing all my power. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. I'm gonna get this all walled off here, get some doors put in for our, for our ranching. I don't know why there's no music sometimes. You really don't notice about music until you don't have it. But let's see if we can kickstart this. Give me some music, game. We have all of our ranching stuff. Yes. So we need one of these. We'll need a drop off so we can actually drop off the critters to a certain location. And then their diet. We need to pay attention to that. Um, these guys are going to eat metal so i will need to set something up to actually send metal there and since we're still pretty early in the game and don't have any shipping we also don't have a source for this metal which is a tiny bit worrying but not the biggest of deals um let's just go ahead and set up a feeder box and i'm going to be a little bit more uh religious about handling this uh by way of asking it to be filled every once in a while and then just dropping the contents on the ground and leaving it off which is probably something I should have advised a while back when I was talking about ranching. Uh, but yeah, we're going to do that this time. Do we need another dupe? Um, are any of these worth it? Can't build or cook. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to take any of them. I guess I'll just take the seed. I also need to eventually be generating some more heat so that we can heat the rest of this place back up because I don't like producing heaters if I don't have to. The other thing that's a little bit interesting about ranching these guys is that these things are going to be in the way for plug slugs to plug in right here. So I guess I should probably have a little bit of a different shape for this. I'm trying to think through this. What should we do? I don't want to have space where these guys cannot work. So I'm going to do something like this. We'll put them down in a little bit of a pit here. And then I need to shorten this room by a little bit so it's not too big. So we're adding three spaces. So if I do something like this, that should take off enough room to keep this at a stable. Actually, how big can stables be? I thought it was only 96, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh no, I am. I'm correct. Okay. Yeah, okay. Now we're getting the right size. Need a station for grooming. Alright, and then up here, we're going to need a few things. We're going to need the generators. We'll need the batteries just to store all that stuff. And we will need the heavy watt wire to run along the walls here. I guess I don't necessarily need to have it run through there. So I'll just go ahead and keep those there. But I will need to eventually have it come up. So let's see where we want to place our battery. Let's put it... Oh, we don't have any refinement right now. We probably need that. So let's go ahead and grab our refinement for metals. We don't even have that. Wow, we are way behind. Okay, this might not happen as quickly as I'm thinking. Fortunately, we have a really good researcher, so we can get that done pretty fast. 
But anyway, I'm gonna set up my battery. The hydrogen's gonna come in here. Am I gonna need a lock on this? Probably not, because when these produce hydrogen, they will probably just have the hydrogen float straight up. But I guess I can't really guarantee that very well. Is that okay? Yeah, I should just put like a... I should put something else here. I should put the other doors, which will at least prevent any transfer in between. We're gonna lose a little bit of hydrogen, but I think that's okay. I don't wanna go too ham with this and like add a water lock or anything like that. We don't need to go that far. All right, so we have the heavy watt wire. Let's go ahead and run that. And I think this will work. I think that the plug slugs are capable of plugging in like this. I don't think it has to hang down like that because they'll just sleep wherever they feel like. And then the slot is like where their head is here. That's where I think it'll generate. And if they're hanging from the ceiling, it'll be upside down. So I think that should work. So as far as the hydrogen is concerned, we will still need a pump. So I'm going to put something here and I'm not sure if I'm gonna wall the whole thing off or just do something like this. Is that gonna work? Actually, that's a good idea. Um, I'm kind of thinking that I don't need to do this something weird. I could just eat up tiles with mesh tiles or something like that. Although, no. Yeah, I should probably put them down here or something like that. Uh, I don't want to do this. This is so clumsy. Oh well. I guess would I rather have this awkward piece? I think so, because then I get more space for the plug slugs to potentially hook in. I don't know. We're just making it up as we go, so it's not going to be perfect. Cancel this. Let's put a gas pump in here. This doesn't need to be any sort of special material. And once our research is done for getting the... Uh... Oh, we should have the generator already. Okay. There we go. Drop that here. And then we're going to have this all connected up to maybe a couple of smart batteries. I also do need to store this. Do we have the capability to store hydrogen yet? Because I don't want to... Well, that's okay. I'll just put a couple of smart batteries there. Let me see if we have the space. We need... Oh yeah, we should have plenty. Okay. Got all the other things that we need. We actually got more than we need. But I did need transformers. That's must be why I did it. All right. Let's go back into our research. Let's work on some brute force refinement. And we will also need the better power cables, which we've got right here, this conductive wire. So that ought to, that ought to pretty much do it for this setup. Oh, I almost did the exact same mistake that I did before. We want that. So what I'm thinking is that oxygen will kind of just trickle in from here. The hydrogen will kind of hang out and then it'll eventually filter up to this pump. Um, I need some way to make sure that this pump is worth running. So I need both a pressure sensor and I need a element sensor. So we need to make sure those are researched also. So if we take a look down here, here's the Atmo sensor, which will te detect pressure. And the actual element sensor, the piped versions are here. This is again also a side effect, here we go, of... Uh, not necessarily needing research this specific this early. Um, usually I will just have this research as a byproduct of everything else that's been happening, so... Yeah, gonna look a little silly sometimes. Actually, what we could do... I'm actually changing my mind on this uh, setup, is I kind of want to go up to the ceiling rather than just having it go halfway, just to store a little bit extra in case we care. There we go. We will need some kind of filtration at first, um, so we can just set up some basic element sensors on pipes. But yeah, we're getting there. Progress is slow, but it's happening. Definitely don't want any doors here, because we don't want any dupes to be able to pass through this. So this will be a little bit inconvenient for them to reach, but that's okay. All right, we have our rock crusher. We'll go ahead and set that up somewhere. Maybe, I don't know, doesn't really have to go anywhere specific. So, uh... Sure. Well, no, I should hook it up to this. Because the heavy watt wire is right nearby. 
In that case, I'm going to deconstruct this. And actually, can I build these on top? I can never remember which one of these I can actually do. Yes, I can. Well, it doesn't matter now because I actually deconstructed the wrong one. There we go. And then probably one here eventually, once this all gets closed off. There we go. This metal we can start filling up early, so let's go ahead and grab some food for the plug slugs. I don't really care which one I want. I guess I'll just use the cobalt because it is the most plentiful right now. And I'll just kind of turn up the requesting on that. And then once it gets filled up, I will just drop it on the ground and uh, let it just kind of chill. So let's make sure that we have everything else coming up. Should be power on the other side. I can't fully wall this yet because I do need more automation cabling and stuff like that. So we won't worry about that yet. Our bathrooms are looking good. So let's go ahead and set up these sinks. The last thing we'll need to do to take care of any lingering germs that might be there is we'll need to clean off all this food. Uh, this food definitely has a lot of germs on it and it will stay that way until we deal with it. So somebody suggested to actually store it inside this and I really like that idea, so let's do that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a manual airlock, looks something like this and then something like that. This isn't gonna perfectly prevent any heat transfer but it's gonna do a better job than just one layer of it. So I'm just gonna do something like this and then I'm going to store my food probably just right here. Um, I will eventually want it to sit down a little bit lower so that it's kind of down collecting carbon dioxide over time. So let's do something like this. And we're going to need, we probably don't need any airflow. I'll mop this up once we get in there. We'll deconstruct this once it's time. And we'll dig through and we're going to store our food right here. Um, we're eventually probably gonna start shipping it in there uh, so that we don't actually have too much traffic in and out, which is one of the downsides of doing it this way. But you know what? We're learning. We're trying stuff out, so let's try that. All right, what's this room size? Did we get it right? Yeah, 96. All right, cool. So, now we will need some ventilation coming from here, which we don't really care about the temperature. If this is oxygen, I will grab it and vent it out this way, so it'll look something like this. We're gonna need one more space for this because the other space is a wall. It's probably like that. Cancel, cancel, all right. And then once we start getting plug slugs in here, we can start taming them, which I think we're ready for that now. So let's start capturing them and setting this as a desired destination for it. Oh, they have pictures on here now. Okay, that's kind of cool. Auto wrangle, let's say, I don't know what kind of space requirements these guys have, but the default ones for the other types of critters is eight. And then if there's any eggs in there, we want to still allow them to lay eggs. So seven or six is probably pretty good. Let's go with seven for right now until we have shipping up. As far as refinement, we definitely need some refinement to be happening. What do we have a lot of? We don't have a lot of anything other than cobalt, so let's just do this. And whoever our operator is should get up here. Are we still researching stuff? I guess I could just look at the station and not mess up and push the wrong buttons. Okay, yeah, we definitely need some research going. So let's get our automation up, which we should get the cabling for here, and we will get the element sensors. Then we'll get the atmos sensors and all that stuff up. We're getting pretty close to time here, so I'm trying to hurry this up so we can actually see this thing in action. Let's start capturing some of these plug slugs. Let's grab you, and you, and you, and you. And I guess that's what we're starting with. I don't see any others. Okie dokie. And then we will need some automation wire, so I can't close this off quite yet. We have the heavy watt wire. They can't build up here, though, so let's do something silly for the time being. We can do something like this, and they can stand on top of the door and get that done. Whoa, what happened? Oh, they're, like, jumping out. <laughs> I guess it's a side effect of me opening the door like this. All right. Okay. <laughs> 
What are you doing? Oh, she's capturing the excess. <laughs> I guess that was kind of a good side effect of what she was doing. I didn't mean for that to happen. Let me prioritize this pretty high just so we can get this closed off. What I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to tell this that I don't need anything anymore. That'll drop it on the floor. And then I'll just keep an eye on this to make sure there's enough food there. And I could do this a handful of times over or just sweep it or something like that. I want to find a better way to do this. Actually, it might be a better way to do this is something like this. Then I can fill all of them up and then I can empty them all at the same time. Which is funny that I'm like taking the food that I just brought here to build more of these things, but it'll just be more convenient. So here we are grooming these guys. Sweet. Every single place they could possibly sleep on the ceiling now can be hooked up to our power. So we should be generating power. One of the last things we'll need to do is actually set up transformers for this, which I don't have the refined metal for because nobody's getting over here and doing it. Oh, I'm actually not generating any power right now, but once we do, we'll be able to actually use this. So let's hook up a couple batteries initially. Let's just do something like this, and we'll replace them later. Hurry up before it's bedtime! Aw, oh, man, they, already be they might already be checked out. Okay. Something we can also do is we can also just keep one of them full. Um, here we go. Should be generating power. <laughs> oh, man. I need to disconnect this. We're sending in the wrong stuff. Deconstruct. Probably also needs to happen up higher, because these actually take up a lot more space than I thought. So if we have the sensor... Hmm. This is going to be awkward. Hi, stress! What's going on? Oh, it's probably because my uh, great hall is not really functioning anymore because of how cold it is over here. That's not good. What other seeds do we have? Let's see if we can have anything that can grow in there. Okay, here's finally somebody that's good at supplying, but I don't want them... Uh, this is okay, I guess. They'll be disrupted by that, but that's fine. Taibo? Isn't that like that exercise from the 90s where you punch the air? Okay, so we have batteries. We'll come back and repair this in a bit. This piping is going to be awkward because this thing is so tall. So let me actually filter this out in the same room uh, as where it already is. I know this is looking like a hack job, but that's because it is. Uh, let's cancel these. Let's deconstruct this. And then I'm going to filter it here. Which we don't have yet. We will eventually get that. We are coming up pretty close to time. I was hoping to be able to get this whole setup done by the time that this video ended. I just don't think we're going to get there. Um, so that is very unfortunate, but we will definitely get there soon. I'll have all this stuff set up so we can store hydrogen and eventually pump it in here and get a whole network of power going. Uh, that will definitely happen by the next video. I think as far as other objectives that we want to get done for the next video is I want to, I will probably just give in and dig into this as much as I can. I know it's going to cool down my base, but I think I will be fine because most of my food is next to this warmer biome and there will be a warmer biome down here. Oh, I never set up power for this. What am I doing? I'm slacking. Uh, I don't actually have bathrooms yet because we haven't hooked it up. Uh, pretty smart by me. Let me see how much power we have on this line. Too much. Okay, we'll fix that too. Uh, but yeah, I want to see if I can get up here. I may also start venturing out to these things so we can start using them. And especially to this one because I want to see what happens when we teleport to another planet. So we will give that a try. Or I guess another asteroid. They're not really planets, but they... I guess they sort of are. Depends on how picky you are about defining what a planet is. But yeah, that's definitely what we'll be aiming for next time. Um, if you have any suggestions or comments, I will be playing through this for quite a while. And I do read all my comments and respond to a majority of them. So leave them down below if you have any suggestions or anything you'd like to see me try that you haven't seen anybody else try or you're just curious about from watching. Yeah, we'll continue to progress and continue to get everything set up. And I will see you back here really soon with another video. Check out my other series and tutorials if you're looking for any more content, which will also continue to come up. Yeah, I'll see you guys really soon, and thanks for watching.